Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this really cool Gottlieb Airport pinball machine. Uh, it's the two-player version of College Queens, or College Queens is the four-player version of this. They're completely different themes. They have nothing to do with each other other than the play field is identical. Um, this is a really cool looking game. It looks like it's going to be really fun. But it's had all kinds of problems. So if you didn't see the first video, we kind of went through it a little bit, worked on some stuff, and got it to come on. In the second video, we worked on a whole bunch of stuff that have been hacked. Horrible hacks underneath the play field. One of the hacks is they moved the flipper switches, which is screwing me up because I can't find the stuff to move it back. Uh, so we may end up having to hack some... Uh, Molex plugs in it or something so that you can remove the play field instead of having everything hardwired to the cabinet Why anybody ever did that? I have no idea, but they did um, So we've got that but we we were waiting on a bunch of parts uh, To work on the play field and then just various things under the play field. So let me show you what we got in This came from The pinball resource Boy, I like this place. Now, they don't pay me or anything. All they, all they give me is good service. So we've, uh, we've bought all this stuff to go in this beautiful machine. A couple hundred dollars worth of stuff. Okay, so um, I'll show you what we got. Look, they sent us, they sent us uh, newspaper coupons, too. It's too close to the beginning of the video for me to look through all this, or, you know, I'll lose viewers. Okay, so we got a flipper rebuild kit. Look at that guy. Boy, he looks cool, doesn't he? So this is where we got the stuff. Again, we have no affiliation. They just do a great job. Okay. We got new... Playfield posts. Customer wanted these. I'll show you that last. Uh, we got new springs for the shooter rod. We also got a new bezel and the sleeve for the shooter rod. New flipper bats. New pop bumpers. Now if you look, these original ones... It's just missing all the stuff. The customer wanted new ones, so we got new ones. I've drawn that in with a Sharpie sometimes, but, you know. The customer wanted it done right. <laughs> Blue. And red. Look how cool this company is. That they would, that they would do that. That they reproduce that kind of stuff. They have the license from Gottlieb, and they have, I believe, I may be wrong about this, but they've got some of the original equipment that the factory used to make some of the stuff like this. They now own. And I don't mean like, oh, I need to get one of those injection mold machines. No, I mean like, they've got the actual machine, you know. Uh, some screws for the play field. The skirts. Correct colors. This is a card that goes right here. These are two screws to hold the flipper bats on the flippers. Uh, there was one post that was taller, and I thought there might be a couple, so I got a couple. This little uh, flipper coil stop is missing from our match unit in the back. We're going to mess with that here in a minute. More pop bumper stuff. The lane guides. Oh, I think I might have ordered the wrong ones. I ordered the one-sided ones instead of the two-sided ones. Mm. Well, I'll have to order some more, but that's all right. We still got a little bit of time for that. Um, but lane guides for the top. There's a coil missing. Coin door stuff for here. And this is one I've never messed with before, but the customer mentioned it, and I looked into it. 
these are the actual wires that the switches on the play field, uh, they get all rusted. And on this particular machine, this play field is pretty screwed up. It's not unfixable, but it's it's got some damage, you know. And uh, these little rollover wires are pretty rusty. So the customer mentioned getting new ones of those, and I said, why not? Let's do it. So they had those too. The pinball resource, great place. All right, so I'm going to pull this out from the wall. Let's mess with that match unit or the 0 to 9 unit uh, coil stop that's missing. I'll show you that, um, and we'll do that first. So if you didn't see the previous video, basically on the 0 to 9 unit, this thing was allowing the coil to wobble around in there, and it's because the coil stop is actually missing. It was broke off and inside the coil. We were having all kinds of problems. So we got in touch with Pinball Resource, and they said that this would work great. So we got this, and this. Look at that. Beautiful. That's not just some random part. That's specifically designed for this. Can you believe that? They still make this stuff all these years later. So that's the one that broke off. The stud just broke. That's pretty common. Got the new one on, bolted right back up, and now it should work pretty good. All right, so that's going to fix our problem with that. And uh, we'd, we'd figured out on the previous video by looking at the schematics that basically the 0 to 9 unit, it does do the match, which isn't all that important if you don't even have the match turned on. It just, uh, that's one of the ways you win a free game. Uh, but it also screws up the, ga the gameplay because that's what alternates the lights that light on one side of the play field or the other. So if you have like 50 points or 300 when lit, that will be lit and then it'll bounce over and that's lit and that's off and it'll go back and forth and you know these other ones as well. So it it's just used to give a little variety to the play field. Every time that thing turns it goes left, right, left, right. So pretty cool. So it's good to get that fixed. On to the next one. Okay, I didn't order any parts for this because I didn't need to, but another thing that we need to fix is this bell back here. The sleeve for the coil is all screwed up. So it needs a new sleeve. The old one is broken. Um, the coil can wobble around, which might make that hit the frame instead of the bell and all this. So. Basically, we need to take this apart and put a brand new sleeve in it so that the uh, the plunger can move properly. So there's the sleeve that was in it, and this is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to have a little lip on it to keep it from moving, right? So this lip will keep it from moving up because it hits the bracket, and it will keep it from moving down because it hits the coil. Okay, another issue is the plunger inside was missing the little nylon tip. so. That makes it shorter, so it's probably not actually going to hit the bell, um, and it makes it sound different if it does hit the bell. So this tip, you know, is what actually is going to hit it, and it will be much louder than it was even if it ever worked. So um, that's pretty common, though. That little plastic piece falls out. If I find it in the bottom, I'll put it back in it and save it. A new sleeve, new plunger. I put the little piece of rubber under it so that whenever it falls down, it hits that instead of hitting the metal because you can actually hear it. If you play one where that little piece is gone or there's nothing under there, you hear it go thump, thump after the bell rings each time. So you're about to hear it for the first time in probably 40 years. I was a little uh, anemic. <laughs> you get the point. Sounds good. All right, so we got that back in. Everything seems good. I think the next thing I'm going to do is there is a coil and a bracket that has been removed underneath the uh, pop bumper here. I'm going to replace the coil, get rid of the last small piece of hack hackage, and then we're going to remove these because we've got new ones for it. And on our next video, we're going to do the play field. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Because um, you have to unsolder them and all of that. Um, and so we'll we'll get it prepped up for that. We need to get down to the bare woods because we're going to repaint a bunch of this. 
Okay, so this game has four pop bumpers. One of the coils is missing, but we've got the bracket for it right here. It was in the bottom. And we ordered a new coil. Um, but like I said, I'm going to remove. go ahead and remove these. You have to take all of this apart to take the top off because of the uh, light bulb that's in it. So the light bulb is soldered in. So since this one's off, it'll, it's a good way to show you how the thing works. On the actual play field there on the bottom, you see that one wire going up there. And it is soldered to a little blade. See it turning and uh, going up through the play field? That blade is one part of the light bulb assembly. And then if you look diagonally across from it, you have this wire going to the other side of the light bulb assembly. So you can't take that pop bumper off without unsoldering that. So we're going to desolder it and uh, then it will all come apart. Now we also need to take the ring off which is this post through here. Two nuts there and you'll notice that the nut on it is a See the yellow uh, ring there around the nut? That is a nylon lock nut. So basically whenever you put that on, um, it won't vibrate loose because the pop bumper is going to be moving and moving around the whole time. And so uh, if you put just a regular standard nut on there, it would work its way loose. Um, and so that's how it looks without the coil in the way for you to see. When the ball rolls over the little skirt underneath the pop bumper, which is that yellow thing, there is a post in the center of the skirt, and it moves through this little spoon here, so that any way that it moves, it presses the switch. And then that big switch, the big blade of the switch, whoa, the big blade of the switch, can we go past that wire? Nope. <laughs> the big blade of the switch barely touches the little blade of the switch. And that's how you want it. You want it where it just kind of barely touches it. The problem you run into is if it touches it too much is you're a little too close. So you'll have... If that switch is too close, what happens is when you hit the flippers or something or another coil fires, it will make that switch touch, which will, it'll think that the ball is on the skirt and it will fire the pop bumper randomly. Uh, so once it does that, this is an interesting way they've done this, by the way. Once it does that, you're touching this blade to this blade. They're metal, so it's going to conduct through those contacts. You can see that one of the blades has a wire running to it, right? but the other one does not. That's because the other one is touching this metal support. See it? So that blade is connected to this electrically. And then you've got screws up here that hold the whole thing together and the other end of the screw is touching this support. Okay, and then this wire is touching the blade that this wire is soldered to is touching this metal retainer here that the screw is touching. All right, so they are using the metal screws to connect this blade to electricity. So they're sending voltage through the hardware. It works because it's in the middle of the play field. You're never going to touch it or anything anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But it's just interesting that they did that. Somebody sat there and thought, hey, we don't need a separate wire for that. Just run it through the screw. And somebody in charge said, that sounds like a good idea. But it's safe. I mean, like I said, you don't, you know, it's not like they're running it through the rails or something. I mean, it's, even if voltage got on the rails, it just tingles a little. It's not that big of a deal, people. 
Come, come on, people. It's perfectly fine that they did that. I'm going to call Stern and see if they've ever thought about going back to that. All right, so I'm going to take these apart, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and re-put the wires on the coil where it goes. So we figured out on the previous video that a bunch of stuff had been hacked. This doesn't even belong here. This black wire should go to one part of the coil, and this wire should go to the other part of the coil, the two lugs on the coil. And then we're good. So to remove this from the, the bottom from the play field, you need to take these three screws out, which removes this. The coil will remain mounted on it, but you need to remove this and this, which will allow this plunger here to stay with the coil. All right? And then once you've done that, you can take the wiring loose for the light and then pull the whole thing out the top. There's a couple screws on the top I'll show you. Okay, so I got that all put back together and it's ready to mount back, but we need to take them all loose so that we can uh, do the work on the play field. So we'll leave it hanging for now. And I have unsoldered the um, wires. Did the same for these three. Took their coils loose. Now in our videos, a lot of times whenever we work on the play field, we turn the lights on on the play field. We're just doing that so that it looks cool on the video. If you're doing this at home, don't do that unless you don't mind if you mess stuff up. Because, <laughs> um, you know, if especially if it's something like this where you've got the pop bumpers just dangling under the play field, you're just asking for something to short together. We don't really mind, because if we short something together, we'll just fix it. But um, what I'll probably do on this is once we take the pop bumper tops off, I'll go ahead and put a couple screws in this to mount them back where they go, just, you know, so that we can turn on the uh, turn on the lights. Another thing, though, that you need to think about is these wires for the lights, um, they could touch the frame of this pretty easily if that were to move to the side. It doesn't really matter. Um but since you've got voltage shorted here, you wouldn't want to, if you end up with voltage shorted here, depending on how you've got this, you might end up with a situation where you're shorting voltages together. So the, the, the way these things work too is when, when it hits that skirt switch, it on this particular one, it turns on the pop bumper relay, which turns sends power to the pop bumper and pulls it in, right? So it pulls it down which pulls on these, right? And that hits the, the ball and knocks it away. Well, when it pulls in, this little wafer here opens this switch. So the switch is closed, right? And the wafer opens it. And whenever it opens it, it kills power to the pop bumper relay, which turns it off. And so that's how they lock the pop bumper on to make sure that it gives it a nice good kick. Um, if you look at this particular one, you can see that this switch right here is broken off. So see the wire running to there? The blade is broken off. So we'll have to fix that. So, you know, you've got power running through that. It's really easy to turn this around the other way where the metal thing is out. And so then the metal thing is hitting the blade, which is connected to power, All right? So that would be, you're shorting your six volt side over to your 29 volt side or whatever it is, 31 volt side. So if you get one where every time the pop bumpers hit, the lights short in and out on the whole play field, check and see if one of these is turned around backwards. So the, whenever you take this apart, this can be the other way. And so this metal piece could be out instead of the fiber piece. All right, so uh, I think we got that. So let me put the play field down and I'll show you, uh, we'll take the top pop bumpers off and we'll see what it looks like underneath there. So here is the pop bumper, and you can see that the ring is not up in the air anymore because it's the spring down underneath that holds it up, right? So it's collapsed down now. And if you look at the top, you can see there's our uh, uh, light socket that we unsoldered from the bottom, and then you've got two screws that hold it in. And they're like this on every manufacturer's 
at least in the EM era that I'm aware of. Unless you go to the really old ones like the Exodies or the Uniteds or something. Is it Exidy? I can't remember if Exidy was the early one. I think it was. Um, so you just take those two screws loose. I've loosened those up a little bit. And now that you've got it all apart, you can pull the whole freaking thing. Wham! Look at that. And uh, this particular one has a Mylar wafer there that has seen better days. And uh, let me show you the problem with those. So the problem is they look really bad. See how, see how it looks? And they're, these particular ones are not attached to the playfield. They're just laying on the playfield. Well, the problem is if you get any kind of dirt under it, which you will. I mean, look at this machine. Now, this is not all that... Uh, this isn't in bad shape compared to the most of them that we see. This thing is old, you know. So look at the dirt here. Right? They just get dirty. That's just something that they do. Keep in mind, too, that a, a, a coil is an electromagnet. And something about those, it just attracts dust and dirt, makes dust and dirt. You know, it's just how it is. They always get all dirty. Right? It's just something about the, the electrostatic nature of it or whatever. But anyway, so there's dirt everywhere. So if any of that gets under this thing, you've just created sandpaper. So the dirt's under there, and then the ball rolls over it. Look how it won't even go flat. Yeah, see there's something. Like, what is that? So whatever that is, is under there. So in other words, it just creates sandpaper. And it wears the paint right off. So on one hand, it does keep from the paint wearing at first because the ball hits it instead of the paint, right? So the, the, the reason they put them under there is because when this comes down violently, wham, to pop the ball, you know, it might push it off this skirt into the wood. Bam, 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 right? And so when they don't have these, sometimes you'll see just it worn all the way down to the wood here around it. But if they don't, if they have these and they weren't cleaned, you know, really well, uh, they get dirt under them and it screws it up too, so... It's kind of six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. So, um, yeah, Mylar. Now, some companies actually glued the Mylar down around the pop bumpers, and those usually, you know, look better because they don't have uh, they don't have the the possibility of the dirt getting under it. Okay, so we're going to pop those off, and that'll get it where we. Uh, of course, Joey's going to take the rest of this off, but this stuff, you know, you got to get the soldering iron out for. Um, looking pretty good so far. So that's blue, and that's yellow. It almost looks like this was red, but I don't believe it was, and I'll show you why. See how it looks like it's faded red? I don't think that's what happened, because there's no more red on the play field. So, you know, they wouldn't have silk screened under the pop bumpers with a completely different color. It just wouldn't have been worth all the trouble. So, we've got a light blue and a dark blue. Dark blue, light blue. So, I don't think it was that. We've got a black and a yellow. There's the yellow. And the black is the line. Um... And then we've got this purple, which is this, right? But if you look really close, there is one more color, strangely. Look at that. You see it? So that's white, and that's some kind of cream or something. It may be, it may be a red that's completely faded away. Hmm. We'll have to look on a. Uh, we'll have to look on a flyer or something. It could be that there was red all over the playfield and every bit of it faded away. So you can see it up here as well. That's white, but that's something else. 
and this part would have been protected from UV or whatever <laughs> fades it. Uh huh. Could have been a red or a pink all over the playfield at some point. It doesn't really matter because it it'll look pretty good once we touch it up and put the bumpers and stuff under it. But hmm. Yeah, see it. It's different. All right, so let's look at a flyer and see if that was a red. So here's the flyer. Airport, new, for the very first time, very targets. I didn't know it was the first one with it. New very targets, very target score from 10 to 500, depending on how hard the target is hit. Creates a tantalizing test of skill and coordination to hold the player's interest game after game after game. A new high in player appeal and profits. Okay, so looking at the play field, if you look close, see the... Now, this is an actual photo of this game, believe it or not. There is something darker above the um, the little banner in Gottlieb. And then over here, there's something over around the 300 when lit. They seem to be using the color over there. And then there is the, the line there, right? Now, that line, if you look, is different than that purplish-looking whatever that we have. So yeah, there's some color. You can see it there too. There's some color that has faded completely away on this. It may have been um, like a pink or a red or something. Hard to tell. Because it's probably even faded on this flyer. Hmm. So the four player version of this game is called College Queens. And we've had a couple of those. And if you look at the uh, label on it, it's a little bit... It's kind of like a a salmon color, like a peach or something. Right. And um, you can also see it around the top, the two top right and left pop bumpers, although the pop bumpers themselves are a different color. So they were messing with some kind of weird color that's kind of faded away a little bit. I would guess it's not a full-on red because the, the red on the uh, College Queens, I've had a couple of them, and it it held up, and it would have been made right around the same time, so you would think if there's something wrong with the red playfield paint. Um, so it's, it's probably not that. It's probably more of this peach or salmon or whatever color. So the next thing we're going to try to take off uh, are these flippers. Now I say try because they look pretty rusty, and sometimes the little set screws underneath don't want to cooperate. We ordered a flipper rebuild kit and everything, so I'm trying to take all this stuff off. Uh, before we work on the play field so we get it as clean as possible and then before we do the touch up so uh, let me lift up the play field and we'll see how bad the set screws look so amazingly even though it was really hacked on the uh, if you watch the previous videos they didn't hack the set screws and these actually are the ones with the the ones with the big head and the external uh, you know that aren't down inside of it where you need to put a uh, allen key on so they're not the little grub screws they're the bigger ones they're really just regular screws um, so usually these cooperate it may snap on us but not usually since it has a bigger head um, usually you can get a little bit better bite on it yep loosen dried right up very cool Alright, so that ought to pull right out. By the way, if you don't have one of these, you need to get you one if you're working on these. This is, I think there's a bunch of companies that make them. We like this particular one because it's Klein, which uh, makes their stuff in the USA. Which it ought to tell us here somewhere. Huh? I thought so. There we go. Made in the USA. These are only about 11 or $12. And this is a quarter inch one, which is exactly what we need for this. And it just, it helps on stuff like this. Because sometimes you need to be back out of the way a little bit or whatever. Watch me snap it after I've been bragging on the tool. So the, um... You know, I don't I don't usually buy expensive tools. I guess eleven or twelve dollars is fairly expensive, but it just it helps you on this stuff. Another thing that's cool about them is they have a hollow shaft. 
So whenever you're doing the um, posts on the play field, you just slide this right down over that little thing that sticks up on the top of the play field, on the top of the post, and loosen it. So we get these ones with the big long shaft that just seems to work a little better for us. And it's got a rubber handle and all that. Now they're not paying me to tell you about this. I'm just saying, you might want to think about it. So yeah, I think we're good. So if you do want some of these, like I said, I like these Klein ones. Um, if you do want these, we've got a link to them on our website. Go to our website, lionsarcade.com, and there is a parts page on there where we put uh, little pictures and links to Amazon of a lot of the stuff that we use in our whenever we do repairs. So we've got some of these on here. It's almost like a pinball wand. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so let me see if I can get the... Uh, uh, Oh, if you go to Amazon and buy any of this stuff that we have on there, it gives us a little tip. We don't actually sell them. It's just we're linking to other people's. And so if you follow that link, um, it gives us a little percentage of anything you buy, even if it's not this. If you go on there and you buy a sports car, we get a percentage of that, too. So we'd like to thank all of the people that have bought sports cars after following our link. I can't believe those cooperated so well. Sometimes we have to cut them off, depending on which ones they are. Sometimes you cannot get the little set screw out. So when you can't get it out and the thing's just stuck on there, you have to cut the shaft of this. And when you do that, it screws up that paw, and you have to buy a new one of those. But they make them, so it's, you know, worst case scenario, you can do that. Okay, so that is that. So... Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. Next time we will do the paint. The cleaning and the painting. Mm. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think it'll uh, I think it'll end up looking pretty good. Right now, I would say it's about a 4 out of a 10. It's pretty rough. But, um, but we'll get all into that on the next one. It's pretty bad up at the top, too. It almost looks like it's been wet or something. Um... But we've got it kind of prepped for that. Joe will come in and take everything off of the play field, get it down to bare wood, and clean it, scrub it, and then we'll start the painting. But there you are. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Uh, make sure to check out the pinball resource if you haven't before and you need pinball parts. They're our favorite part place. Uh, we like all of them pretty much. I, mean, I don't have anything against any of them, but uh, pinball resource, they go out of their way to make parts for these old EMs. And so I like to support them because... Um, you know, like that little, that little coil stop, other places probably have that too, but little things like that, man, if they stop making those, we're in trouble. <laughs> we are in trouble. I'd be rigging up a, a bolt or something to try to make it work. I mean, it can be done. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I'd do it, but it, you know, it's just cool whenever you got the right part. So leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And you know what? Don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. My brother has his own channel here on YouTube. Uh, we we work on arcade games, pinball machines, and jukeboxes. My brother Donnie uh, works on old buildings, old vehicles, and he has a farm. Look what we've been working on tonight. Look at this. Midway's Off-Road Challenge. Very cool game. Had to take pictures of that, get it all cleaned up. It's the one with the seat, like the, the lean that you lean on instead of the seat that you sit in. So, we've already got videos of that up, though, but... We will see you back here in a couple days uh, where we'll tear into this play field. So I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you on the next one. This is Gottlieb's beautiful airport pinball machine.